Here is a 2007 Suzuki XL7. This uses the B111 key blank. Um, I already have a blank loaded into my pack punch, but I'm going to have to use it. See, there's the ignition. It's kind of a weird one, which is why I have decided to film it. Okay, so I have the B111 Lishi, some Houdini, which I'm going to try to work the straw in real quick. B111 is probably one of the hardest keyways to get a straw into. Set this down so I can hook the lubricant up to the straw. And just flood it, man. Just flood it. It can't be uh, too, uh, too much. Sorry. Blank in. Wiggle it up, down, left, right, and out. Omnidirectional every which way. Got an impression already. Feel for the binding disc tumblers. kind of sticky in this lock got a little rotation on that one Ugh. these bottom ones are real sticky Got some plug movement. Happy about that. Because I've been feeling like nothing's happened lately. God, there's some bird over here screaming at me.
Ah, damn, got it. Whew, that was a tough one. Jeez. All right. That's why I wanted to film it. Decoding's gonna be a bugger. So. All right, I've got to cut to decode because I have to hold this pick in here flush like this. Otherwise, it will give me inaccurate readings. And this was a monster to pick, so I'll be right back. Funny thing happened. Um, I had my pack-a-punch in the vehicle, and when I first picked the lock, I picked it over and locked it. And um, picking clockwise, I didn't get very good readings from it because everybody who's tried these uh, should know that uh, you know B11 is a, a monster to both pick and decode because the pick moves so much that whenever you try to accurately decode it you can get really askew readings so um, I picked it unlocked again it was actually a lot easier to pick uh, counterclockwise and uh, I had to input several different progressions kind of guessing because I was getting variations between um, clockwise and counterclockwise readings. So I went ahead and put in uh, half cuts. One second. Actually made sense or not. Yeah. Okay, sorry. But, uh, I went ahead and put in half cuts. And that did the job. And so I cut a metal test key and it turned the ignition. But the ignition is currently, um, it's currently got a hold of my key and won't let go. So now, hello battery. Look at all the marks from prior connections and of course the hood won't stay up on its own sorry it has begun to rain here so everything's getting a little wet. Gotta put this one down. Ah, okay. There we go. Plugged in, and you can hear the juice hitting the car. Um, I've got to get the key out. See? There it is my cut key and it turns relatively easily ah there's a security light big little padlock now with the uh, theft deterrent I'm gonna go ahead and test this in the lock butter now I got just the worst readings with my leashes so I was really surprised that um it even gave me a hit on a viable key sequence so I was pretty excited about that what we're doing now is we're going to duplicate the test key pattern onto the chipped key that I've built it is a shell with a Crypto 44 or 46 Crypto Fill 46 uh, chip in it. Flip up the t 
tip gauge. And then we're gonna pull this one out and flip it. Make sure it's gauged. Twister tight. Sometimes you have to hand file these to clean them up because the duplicate key often does not get cut as deep as it should. And that's just the way it is because of the warding. They call it the Z keyway because it looks like a Z. It's a, it's a menacing keyway. It causes a lot of problems with a lot of people. Let's see what programmer I can use to get this guy into the emo. Okay. It's tested in the door lock. I may have to file it a little bit. Yep. It's a little tough to turn. Turns the ignition right over. Okay. Turn off the accessories. 